Oh my gosh, huzzah. <laughs> I love when things work. Isn't it a beautiful thing? Yay. <laughs> Yay, yeah. so everybody, this is Debbie Dashinger, and welcome to Dare to Dream. It is my honor and pleasure to be here with you. This show has been nominated for two People's Choice Podcast Awards, one Webby Award. I've been around 13 years this June doing radio and podcasts, and I love this conversation. Yeah. And thank you so much, because this show has been ranked um, under 100 in the USA and all of Apple Podcast for self-improvement, as well as in global reach, and in many countries, top 10. And that's because of you, mm. because you listen, and because you subscribe, and because you leave five-star reviews, so people find this number one transformation conversation. So I'm deeply grateful. I am a certified coach, and what I be out in the world is usually in front of the camera, in front of the mic, a writer, also on stage. What I offer out in the world as a certified coach are my services to help you write a page turner book. I take an author's book to a guaranteed international bestseller fully done for you. And I also run twice a year, the ultimate visibility formula. And that's where I show you how to get interviewed on radio and podcasts and get amazing results. It's that coaching, that intimate coaching in between of what you're missing and what will completely change what you're doing on air. So join me if those are of interest. And right now I have two amazing, very timely offers. I've got an author platform that is just rolled out. I've never done it like this before. I've done the groups and the privates, and I'm really excited to offer this. Uh, people are coming on board because of the price point. So if you would like to write a book and you would like help in a group setting, I've got a private membership set up. It is ongoing, and you want to register to get your place. It's debbie-dashinger.com slash visible visionaries. That's two Zoom calls every month that will keep getting you further to understand exactly how to execute your book from the inception, the start, to the publication. And then I am also offering an anthology for people like myself who are dog lovers. I'm putting together this amazing experience. We've only got seven chapters left. So if you are a dog lover or in the pet industry or a dog has somehow influenced your life, maybe you were born in the year of the dog. <laughs> There's a space for everybody in the chapters. Uh, go see that package and there's a free video there for you. It's debbyd.net slash anthology. And please always remember, spell my name right so you can get into these sites. There's no E at the end of Debbie, it's D-E-B-B-I. So it's Debbie, D-E-B-B-I, D dot net slash anthology or Debbie Dashinger, D-E-B-B-I, D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R dot com slash visible visionaries. And you can be a writer and a published author this year. Let this time we're in right now stand for something. Put something out into the world that is your message and your story. It is your time. Make great use. This show is sponsored by Dr. Dane here, as well as Access Consciousness. They do beautiful energy work out into the world. And if you would like to become a facilitator or if you're interested in taking the classes, buying the books, products, go to Dr. Dane, D A I N, here, H E E R dot com or accessconsciousness.com. They are friends to the show. So I'm leading in to tell you about my guest today, and um, he works with something that I'm fascinated by and have, of all the many, many explorations I've done in the deep metaphysical healing energy world, I have not done this yet, but I'm still really fascinated because there's a lot of different ways people use NLP. So if you would like to receive today a special blend of neuro-linguistic programming, better known as NLP, my guest is Art Geyser, and he's the creator of energetic NLP and transformative energy work. He's an internationally renowned NLP trainer, executive coach, intuitive, and healer. And Art is known for his miraculous remote energy work and his ability to help people release energetic and unconscious blocks and open up their abilities. Art's diverse background includes working with Fortune 100 companies to develop exceptional leaders and teams. 11 years as a medical researcher, NLP, spirituality, coaching, transformative healing energy work, and intuitive development. And if you would like to learn more about him, go to E, 
NLP and the number three dot com, and it's right there in the notes. And I welcome Art Geyser to the Dare to Dream show. Hi, it's great to have you. Well, I'm, I'm honored to be here. You have such incredible guests. Uh, you know, since we met a couple of months ago, I've been listening to some of the podcasts, and you have, you know, Lynn McTaggart and James Redfield, and just so many great people. So I'm uh, I'm honored to be on the show with you. Oh, thank you. And you're in great company and they're in great company with you as well. You know, you have a big presence out in the world. And so let's talk with why you created your own form, if you will, your own brew of NLP called Energetic NLP. How did that soup come about? Well, in spite of all the work I've done in corporations about people having goals and planning, my life has mainly been very, very synchronistic, things to sort of happen. Mm. And like, I think a lot of people in personal development, um, well, I mean, if I go back to when I was a child, there were two things that fascinated me. One was science. My father was one of the early computer guys. I mean, nowadays, a lot of young people growing up around technology, but um, like my father was in charge of running the third mainframe computer, a commercial one. And um, so, I mean, I was always wanting to be a scientist when I grew up. But the other side of me was fascinated with the powers of the unconscious mind and mysticism. And, and I just somehow knew all of that was true. And even though so many people think science and, and the mystical are opposed, I, I've never thought that. So, and I was a very adventurous in person. And then I got stuck. I, I just got stuck for years and years. I mean, it's embarrassing to me now how long I was stuck. And energetic NLP really came out of what I, I did to get myself unstuck and then what I've done with people over the last 35 years. But what actually happened for me is I, I went to a talk on intuition. It was just an okay talk. But during the break, I went out in the hallway and there was a, a bulletin board with flyers on it. And I looked at one and it said neuro-linguistic programming. And when I read the words, it literally felt like a bolt of lightning hit me on top of the head and went through my body. And I was like, I mean, it's literally like, boom. And the scientist to me was like, what was that? And the mystic to me was like, oh, it was a sign. What do you think it was? And then, and I'm not sure what to do with this. And it, it, at the talk, they were selling a lot of books on intuition development and psychic development and things. And one of the books was an NLP book, which had nothing to do with intuition development. I thought, that's interesting. And then, um, but everything was like magical ever since then. I, I, when the developers of NLP became my mentor, I mean, it all just sort of happened. And, and I loved it and it took to it very quickly. But because I was studying it in Marin County in Northern California, there were a lot of people into psychic development and healing and spirituality. And, and people started, um, I had studied a little bit of it, but I'd never gotten that far with it. And they began to teach me and introduce me to teachers. And um, uh, one of them went, Oh, this is incredible psychic. He's a, a friend of ours. He and his wife, and she's an incredible psychic too, are in town and um, they're doing a workshop next week. And they come over Wednesday night and they're just doing readings on people. I thought, well, that'll be fun. So I show up and I got there late and everybody's sitting in a circle and this Lynn Martin has his eyes closed and everybody's getting to ask him a question. And I was really excited about NLP, but I didn't know what to do with it. Like, should I teach NLP? Should I do work one-on-one? -on -one? Should I take it into the corporate world? You know, uh, I had no idea what I was going to do with it. And, um, um, and when people would ask him questions, <clears throat> he would give them an answer. And a lot of times the answer didn't sound that profound to me, but I'd look at them and you could see they were like, <gasps> so I thought, that's interesting. But if, they, but if they asked a decision question, he'd always go, well, you have free will. It's not for me to tell you. So sometimes I'm a slow study. So when it came to me, I went, you know, I learned all this wonderful NLP and I'm not sure what to do with it. And, um, you know, I'm thinking of these different things. And he goes, well, you have free will. It's not for me to tell you what to do. And then he goes, but there's something else. And he proceeds to tell me my biggest fear, which I had never told to anybody. I still don't tell the people. And it probably didn't sound that unusual to anybody else, but it was my secret fear. And he said it to me and then he goes, you don't have to worry about that and goes on to the next person. And I felt like this weight come off me. And 
Uh, I cleared the decks and I took his workshop the next weekend. And by the end of it, I, I could do these amazing things. And um, and then since then, I've, I've studied with amazing, uh, like Philippine and South American and Western healers and had two empowerments from the Dalai Lama. And, um, and, and I just continuously learning and developing it. So then I had these two fields, NLP, where you could get magical results with people. And if people aren't familiar with NLP, the most famous person in our field is Tony Robbins. And he does his whole raw, raw Tony thing around it. Um, but the core of his power to change people is NLP. And I found like NLP was incredible and it had its limitations. And the spiritual energetic work was incredible, but it had some limitations. And when you put them together, it was like one plus one equal to 100. Mm. And so that, that was the birth of energetic NLP. So it all came out of my being stuck for years. <laughs> and having a fear that got addressed. And I, I think that is so profound that yeah. you had that experience. And at some level, your being must have been very willing to release that because 30 other people could have heard the oh. same thing and not shifted. But you did. And you shifted deeply into this. And I, you know, I got a download while I was reading your bio. So I want to ask you, I have recently become fascinated with the idea of a blueprint that we live out of. And many times, well, obviously sometimes a blueprint can be, you make a lot of money, you have a great love life, you have um, a very healthy body. I mean, there's a lot of blueprints, right, that we can choose and create around. But also there can be aberrant blueprints that some people liken it to yes. a groove of a record going around and around. It's like, why am I having the same experience? You know, I'm always getting crushed. I always feel abandoned. I always feel rejected. It's like, right. can't seem to be loved. Da, da, da. And I was listening to a shaman talk about this. And even though I understand the premise, something about the way he talked about it just sort of cracked me mm. wide open. And now I'm hungry. And I've even experienced wow. soul retrieval. And I mean, I've been around a lot of blocks, but this made me like, no, I want that. I'm tired of this. I want that. I want the light to pour in where the cracks have been. And I'm curious if that is something in your energetic NLP that you're able to access and work on. Yes. And if I can make a side comment before I answer that, when I, I never just give talks. I always run energy. And one of my specialties is remote energy work, which, by the way, anybody can learn to do. So it's not, I'm not bragging, but I have learned to do it. And so if people are listening to this when they're driving, please turn it off. Because I'll start running a lot of high frequency energies and they're designed to get you to go inward and not the way you want to be when you're driving. They're great for, for transforming your life, not great for driving. So I know a lot of people listen to podcasts when they're driving. So I always like to tell people, don't listen to me while you're driving. Um, but coming back to the blueprints, um, yeah, there's a lot of ways you can look at it. So one is the, the karmic condition you're in. And I do a lot of work around karma. Another is what are called spiritual contracts. In mm. their contracts, agreements that we made either on the level of our spirit, our soul, or our conscious mind. And they can come from other lifetimes. Um, they can come from this lifetime. And a lot of people believe in, uh, Carolyn May, May, I know you've interviewed, she has a whole book on spiritual contracts. Um, uh, but they, I, I think of them not in a negative way, but I, I call all that spiritual cages. So there's all these things defining our lives and limiting it. And they're not like a cage, like they're bad. They're the human condition. The catharsis. So your karma what creates. You're saying. There's a catharsis going on because if our soul had a contract, listen, listen, dear love, I'm really sorry to tell you, but you're going to experience yeah. X, Y, and Z. But there's a reason because we are clearing that out. We're clearing the karma out. This is what I hear you saying. We're also clearing out the incident so that there's ultimately a deep healing and we don't have to do this again. Is that correct? Yes. And what makes it even better though, is that a lot of the contracts can be changed. The karma can be changed. Um, Ding, 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 ding. It doesn't necessarily um, have to be worked out. It's like that, and people have a lot of different ways to use the concept of karma. 
Uh, I use the one that Dalai Lama talks about. He has a great book, The Universe in Single Adam, where he talks about it. And um, in it, he talks about karma isn't, uh, he goes, it's not some Eastern version of reward and punishment and heaven and hell. He goes, it's just cause effects. Everything you think and do has effects that ripple through time, including from past lives. And um, uh, you can, a lot, most of the karma you can clear and change. You don't have to necessarily do, you know, it isn't like, so you were bad another lifetime, you necessarily have to be good. I mean, that's right. one way to work with it. But a lot of karma you can just release. I mean, I think it's in this new age that we literally are coming into. Um, more and more people are going, well, I don't have to work it out. So the example I always like to use is, let's say Hitler is reincarnated. Which would you rather, that he's having a miserable life and suffering, or he's this wonderful, joyful person bringing light into the world? <laughs> you know, I'd rather, if the he's reincarnated, be good. a wonderful person bringing light into the world, you know? Yeah. He's not helping if he's here suffering, you know? Um, it's like, um, and I do a lot of work with, a lot of the, I should say to everybody, I, I made up a term in energetic NLP, it's beliefs du jour, like soup du jour. Mm -hmm. And in energetic NLP, I make people take a pledge at the beginning of the training programs that they're not going to believe anything I tell them. And that they're going to explore and discover their own inner wisdom and spiritual information. And I know, uh, is it Sean Carroll? Is it that is the last name that you had on recently? Sean um, Stone? He, he's a... Sean Stone, I'm sorry, I don't know where I get Carol. Um, yeah, he, he, he's the one, um, he was talking about symbolism and about everybody finding their own truth. Yes. So, uh, I mean, a lot of his ideas are very different than mine, but, but in my work, it's always about, my job is to help people connect with their own spirit and their own inner wisdom and not to believe what I'm telling them. I, I want them to play with what I'm telling them. And, and I, I, so I, I encourage them not to take their beliefs that seriously. You, you've got to work out of them. But to me, like, let, if somebody said 10 years from now, Art, you're going to believe exactly what you believe today. I would find that depressing. It's like, well, what have I been doing for 10 years? Haven't I learned anything? Even, even if the words sounded the same, my understanding of the beliefs, you, you know what I'm talking about, would deepen and change. So... In, in my work, I'm always encouraging people to like connect with their own your wisdom and spirit. But my experience is, having said all that, is that karma can be cleared and changed. Spiritual contracts can be changed. And I, I do a lot of work with spiritual contracts. And, and they are creating blueprints for your life. Um, and a lot of people just end spiritual contracts. I don't think that's necessarily the right thing to do. Some you want to end. A lot of them... Um, your spirit will want to revise them, not so much as end them. And others of them, your spirit will go, no, you can't change them until you've learned something or done something. Mm -hmm. And so in the way I work with contracts, which is kind of unique, um, we, we, we sort the contracts out and you deal with them in those levels, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Which so ones can you end, revise? Or, yeah. You do these in sessions personally or remotely with people. Um, yeah, that's just so important to me right now. Yeah, I do a lot online with that. And you mentioned, and I think this is why I have that feeling, Art, is because you said this new time we're coming into. So let me be clear <laughs> when he says that. Yeah. Me too. Like, I have been getting downloads because I, I don't want to paint yeah. myself as something that fabulous. I want to be clear. In the beginning, I was like, oh, yeah, this is going to pass, you know. And when I realized, oh, this is not passing, there's something else going on, I immediately started getting a lot of information. And the information was deeply spiritual. And it, this is as a collective, this is yeah. as an individual, which we all know is an, is an illusion anyway. And this is the, A, what have you not been facing? What have you not been dealing with? Who have you not been? Mm -hmm. Like if you were powerful enough to shut down a whole planet and shut yourself inside for this period of time, hmm. <laughs> 
you think there's something to take a look at <laughs> and feel and get through and grieve and whatever it is to become and fully step into. And then it is a planet, dear God, to stop raping the planet and the waters and the skies and the animals and, you know, politics. I mean, this is not just a reset and a back to normal. I know this and I don't even know what that looks like no. going forward. So will you address that? Because I profoundly am there and that is a big part of why this blueprint conversation is so important to me to clean up and clear out because I feel mm. a huge calling personally. And in order to be all of that, I need to up my, up my game here, you know? Right. Yes. Yeah. And, and the thing is, to me, I think of it as like the game, you know, we all, uh, that potential about the game is, you know, it's like, it's right there. It's just getting rid of the, unconscious program, the energetic programming, the spiritual contracts, the ancestral programming, the karma that keeps us from being these incredible beings. And, and I totally agree. I mean, we've manifested collectively this pandemic, but I, I like to put it in perspective too. If you look at the 20th century, everybody seems to have forgotten what a nightmare the 20th century was. I mean, it was World War I, which, you know, most of us, forget like how incredibly horrible that was. I mean, there were people in trenches fighting each other for years, you know, and dying of the Spanish flu at the same time. Um, then they had a little break. Then there was the Great Depression. Then there was World War II, the Holocaust. Uh, there was Mao killing 20, 30 million of his own people. Stalin killing 20, 30 million of his own people. Laos, Cambodia, you know, uh, Rwanda, you know, on and on and on. Uh, Korea, Vietnam. I mean, there were just so many horrible things going on. So to me, it's like, it's fascinating to me. And I don't want to minimize the suffering that some people are going through the pandemic, because they certainly are. But when you compare it like to a World War II or the Rwandan genocide or something, I see this humanity moving up. And like we, we've created a crisis for our growth, what people call a healing crisis. But we've done one and again, I, I don't want to insult anybody or minimize them if you've had a dear one die or you're out of money. And this is huge. But still compared to things like the Rwandan genocide or the, or the Holocaust or, you know, all of these things, I, I believe humanity is upping our game. And we're, we're realizing you, we don't have to have com those levels of horror for us to change. And that we're learning. I, I think this is an opportunity to realize we can get the messages, we can work with them. And, and those blueprints can shift when we get the message. Mm. It, it's like then there's not the spiritual forces trying to, like I mentioned with the spiritual contracts, some of them I call learn dues. And when I would work with people, we couldn't change those until they, um, uh, uh, you know, their, their spirit would be going, you, you have to learn something or do something or both. Um, and I think all of this is humanity, like I said, this opportunity to wake up and go and look at everything from income inequality and, and uh, uh, racial uh, you know, the inequalities going on there and, and pollution and how we're treating one another and, yeah. and how many of us you know, just took for granted, oh, I go to a store and there's anything I want. <laughs> and all of a sudden, like, people can't even get toilet paper. And I mean, it's, it's a great awakening uh, and, and I think that when we embrace it being that, then the opportunities are, are, are quite amazing. Mm. Yeah, and a pandemic, by the way, can only happen when there's a lack of balance. So we have as a humanity and a planet, yeah. and so at a balance that we basically welcomed it in, right? I mean, we all have germs going through us all the time, but we don't always get a cold and a virus. Yeah. We get it when our immune system is down and collectively our immune system has been down. So in light of that and, and right. everything you just shared about almost the invitation of why we brought this on, if you will, what is, so you have some terms like miraculous self and whole being permission, pretty delicious. Art, what do those mean for right now and for going forward? Mm -hmm. well, uh, thank you for asking. Um, there's central ideas in, in, that are unique to energetic NLP. Um, the miraculous self, and, and I always have to tell people ahead of time, it's not the same as your high self. I don't know, people always want to make it the same thing. It's like, 
Your high self's a wonderful concept. This is something different. Your high self just exists. Your miraculous self is something that only kind of sort of exists. It's like a muscle in your body you've never used. And until you start using it, it, it doesn't develop. What I began to discover years ago when I'd be working with people is there was a whole set of different agendas going on. So people would talk about, well, I'm visualizing what I want, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And there's a whole series of, of agendas that, that built, create this what we call whole being permission. So your individual spirit has an agenda for your life, and it, your soul has agendas for your life. Your conscious mind has at least one agenda, often several. Your unconscious mind will have lots of agendas. Your body has its agendas. And then you have the limitations of spiritual contracts and karma. Mm -hmm. And in order to have 100% permission for something, your spirit, your soul, your conscious mind, your unconscious mind, your body, your karma, and your spiritual contracts need to line up. And that's why so often in life people go, this part of my life really works, but these don't. Or, you know, or like I, I start getting financial abundance and then it always falls apart. You know, or I start finding love and it always falls apart. One of those areas will be out of balance mm -hmm. or out of whack. And, um, and the miraculous self is when your spirit with its cosmic great awareness and your, in, your inner human wisdom are aligned. And you might think they'd automatically be aligned, but they're not. Mm -hmm. And people use words like spirit and soul to mean different things. Um, a lot, a lot of, a lot of systems talk about the person has an individual spirit and individual soul, but they use the words in opposite ways. And so, what I mean by it, if, if you think of the non-physical self, and then you get into the etheric, where, uh, and, and then into the astral and higher levels of energy, what I'm calling your soul is the lower frequencies of your non-physical self. Not lower as inferior, but they're, they're closer to physicality and they're closer to the human condition. And you mentioned earlier soul retrieval. You know, years ago I go, well, souls can't be damaged and they can't be broken. But I was thinking what I would now call your spirit. But so that what this lower level of the non-physical you, um, it, 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 it's like a click up from your personality. It has programming, it has issues, it has wants, it has needs, it has fears, desires. As you get into higher and higher frequencies, you get into your vast as well, what, what I'm calling your spirit. And your spirit is kind of like the perfect parent. With, within limits, it's going whatever you want, dear. You want financial abundance? Well, that's a valid spiritual path. You want to uh, struggle to get by every week? Well, that's another valid spiritual path. You know, and you want love, fine. You, you want your heart broken, well, that's valid. Not because it doesn't care, but, but you know, just like you want an parent who goes, you have free will, live your life, I will support you, but you get to choose. And so you have your spirit, it's got this vast awareness, but it just sees so many things as being valid, where your human inner wisdom is, is just that. So when it's communicating with your spirit, it can, it can go, yeah, I know that, that my getting sick is a valid spiritual path, but is there another way for me to do this? Mm -hmm. Or getting my heart broken, is there another way for me to do this? So your miraculous self is when you start creating this alliance between your spirit and your inner human wisdom, so they're informing each other. And then you connect it to your conscious mind, unconscious mind and body, so you're being guided, supported, nurtured, and loved in everything you do. So, um, and in a little bit, if you want, I can help people start creating a miraculous self for themselves. Oh, God, let's like not say kind of sort of exists. <laughs> yeah. That would be too kind. Yeah, let's not. <laughs> in fact, I'm glad you said that because I want to just interject for people listening, people watching. You want to stay with us because Art actually is going to be doing some transmissions, some very specific healing transmissions. I ain't going to tell you when. you got to stick around. But do stick around because he is going to do it. And it is, um, I think it's a very compelling, I'm feeling it already, by the way. I'm a deep sensitive. So I already know he's running energy like I'm clear to stay very right. present right now. But I have to say at a time when a lot of people are not feeling safe, 
when they feel separation or anxiety or a lot of bummer yeah. about what's going on um, and all the changes and the not knowingness, a tremendous uncertainty. At the very least, this is great for you. Mm -hmm. For those who are even using this time to say, hmm, okay, cool, God, goddess, you got my attention. What else is possible? Mm -hmm. You know, and this stuff can also, if you're widened back enough, can also help some possibilities to come into your space. So art is already running energy. Mm -hmm. And sensitives will know that. And then he's going to do some very specific things for us later. So just so you are aware of what's happening. So um, forgive me. I wanted to throw that in there. But um, I, I love this you. idea that, yeah, my pleasure. You were talking about you can run something for us to go into our miraculous self. And you know what? What does that mean, though? I heard your words, but still. What, give me like marketing benefits. Why do I want to be my miraculous self? Does that mean that I'm going to be experiencing miracles? Yeah. Okay, that's pretty easy. <laughs> yeah, and then I'll be yes. my highest self, my best okay. self, most magnetic. Yeah, and, and so, I mean, working with your miraculous self is one of those things that you, you know, it's why I do longer programs or training programs. So it's something that gets better and better and better. But even the beginning stages of it is very powerful. And think of it like if you, you know, the old Disney cartoon with Pinocchio with Jiminy Crickets, they're giving Pinocchio advice. Um, they, so your miraculous self isn't in charge of your conscious mind and conscious mind and body, but it can constantly be advising you, supporting you. Um, nurturing you, helping you manifest. I mean, they can really open up the miraculous instead of your life. It can help you be at the right place at the right time and not be at the wrong place at the wrong time. It can um, help you make decisions. It can help you, um, uh, I believe, and I, I always have to put a caveat because I was a medical researcher. I can't prove this is true, but I, I believe it can actually work with the physicality of your body mm. and guiding. So if you think of like the immune system, a lot of immune system problems are your immune system either isn't working on something that it shouldn't work on, or like with allergies and other immune diseases, it's attacking things it shouldn't attack. And I believe that you can connect your miraculous self in to improve those. Uh, I know it helps decisions and it helps, um, uh, it really helps every aspect of your life. So it's, it's like having this incredible guide, mentor, but who can do more than that, who can actually work with your energy too, if you give it permission. And yeah. it's all, everything in energetic NFP is permission based. So if you, the more you give your miraculous self permission, not, not again to be in charge, but to work with you and to work with the energy. And, um, uh, you know, people in my programs, we laugh because the synchronicities get hysterical. Like I was teaching in Paris and they used, I don't know if they still have it. There was a magazine called Periscope and it was free. And it was like, what's going on in Paris that week? I've been to the shows, to art galleries and stuff. And they have, they, whatever the cover is, they would have uh, posters up all over the metro and stuff. And the first time I taught in Paris, my sponsor there goes, you're not going to believe this. And she, that week's copy of Periscope on the cover goes, art in Paris. <laughs> and, oh, and, we're and I'm going, oh. <laughs> and I went, she, she goes, you feel properly welcomed? And I go, oh. and all over the metros, there's all these posters, art in Paris. Wow. You know, it's like, That's beautiful. I love the many so, ways um, it can be communicated with. Okay. Well, yeah. you know, so, I mean, so life just becomes more miraculous. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'll have some of that, please. I'll, t I'll take a piece of that pie or the whole pie. Yeah. So cool. So we're going to take a quick break here. And when we come back, Art will be actually taking us through something. So definitely stick around. And for those of you who are ready to stand for your greatness, because there's plenty of people out there are saying, I'm so bored right now. I'm bored out of my gourd. Well, if you would like a way to channel your creativity, take action, you can join the Visible Visionary Group. It is a membership platform to start writing your book, to take your book from start to finish. And I'm gonna show you how to write a page turner. I have been doing free webinars on this leading up to the membership. So what you do now, what you choose, 
let me tell you, if you want to write a book, you'll have it in six months. It'll be published this year. Like, how does that sound? How does that feel? It really is time to harness what you've got inside, the power you've got inside, the story, the message. This is for you. And I'm excited for the people actually who have already been signing on for there. There are more people, just so you know, more people reading books right now than ever before. So like, is it a good time? Mm-hmm. Definitely. Join me. I'm going to show you the entire system. You'll be coached live and we'll take your book from start to publish. You want to go to debbie-inger.com slash visible visionaries. That's D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R.com and join me at Visible Visionaries. I'm excited to work with you. And I'm gonna bring Art back on the show. His website is enlp3.com. It's the number three, enlp3.com. And Art, uh, let me let you take it from here and uh, let me know whatever we need to do, feet on the floor or any kind of breathing, or I'm, I'm your every man, every woman. Great. Um... So the really hard part of this is just to relax and have fun with it. In, in energetic NLP, we believe that, I mean, there are energy systems where people are very serious and concentrate hard, and, and that's great. Energetic NLP is the opposite. Um, I discovered years ago that the more playful we were, like, like in my workshops, if people get too serious, literally I started singing old McDonald and things, um, you know, because... And I, I go like, just be playful, have fun with this, do it wrong, don't try to do it right. And the, and the advantage is, so we're going to start building a miraculous self for everybody, and then I'll just run some energy. And when I work with people, what, what, the, what everybody can do if you want is you'll put your miraculous self in charge. My job will be to bring in like a whole symphony of energies, and your miraculous self will decide what it wants to do with them what blocks it wants to clear, what blueprints it wants to change, um, uh, what abilities it wants to have blossom in you. So uh, again, the hard part of this is just to relax. The other thing I like to warn people is some of the energies are very high frequency and, and that's deliberate because that puts you into a state where it's really easy to make deep transformation. So if later I or Debbie are talking and you're going, I don't really remember what happened. That's fine. You know, people always worry. They go, I think I missed it. And I go, no, you were just off in another zone, another realm of reality. You might have even fallen asleep. It, it's fine if any of that happens. And because this is recorded, you know, you know, if you want to know what I said, yeah. you can listen to it later. Um, right now, just relax. I mean, how often in life do people go, don't work hard, don't relax, don't do it right. Just take a deep breath. And what you do need to do consciously if you want this, and again, our, our primary goal here is that you start creating and strengthening your miraculous self, which is, again, your spirit with its vast awareness and your human inner wisdom really working together to create a life for you that's miraculous, that's flowing, where you're guided, nurtured, loved, and supported. And you feel that no matter what's going on. And, and when you asked about the benefits earlier, you know, students of mine and, and I've gone through, you know, loved ones die and, and you know, and things that are really difficult situations. When you really have a your miraculous self there, is underneath whatever experiences you're having, you feel solid. You have this core of spiritual joy that's still there. And, and you don't suppress the other emotions. I mean, you know, I felt grief. I felt other things. But I, under that, I felt solid. And, and that's what my students talk about, too. So that's Another the really great things about it is whatever life throws at you, you got to feel turn like that I'm thing guided off and supported. Speaking, I'm, whatever yeah. that is, there, there's some kind of like Facebook or yeah, um, messages. If you could turn that off, um, just because if we close yeah, our eyes, it could be a little yeah. jarring. But I love. I'll just talk while you do that. I love that idea because um, that's a lot of what I've been feeling, um, what I feel called yeah. to. I mean, there's so much, it's sort of very intimate for me to share some of this. So I may keep it somewhat generic, although mm -hmm. art, you're probably feeling, sensing anyway, sure. matrix wise, what the truth is. Yeah. But I feel like, you know, some of the things that have been running me, and that is very much what it feels like in my life, it's like I have this 
huge call to mm -hmm. step into power. And I know that's bandied about, and I mean that. I really mean like there's a core shaman living inside of me who's like, yeah, all that other, yeah. that, that was child's play. This is now. And it's like, I can feel that and sense that. I have at times even been that, but definitely not consistently. And I certainly don't know how to call on it like a, whew, like a stake in the ground. And um, so I yeah. intimately understand what you're talking about, all of it. Yeah. So anyway, you go ahead and do you want yeah. us to close our eyes or do you want us to well, keep our eyes open? Oh, uh, it, it's probably more comfortable with eyes closed, but whatever people want. Um, okay. You know, if, if I if I were on the other end of this, I'd close my eyes, or whatever people are comfortable with. Right. And with your permission, I'll help you some with that. And if I can just say, um, you know, you said sometimes you are that. You might try on the idea that you always are that. You just can't always manifest that. I mean, that is, you know, I can see that in you. That that is who you are. That's who you really are. And we come into this lifetime with limitations. And I think the opportunity is to keep opening up more and more and blossoming more and more. And the other thing for people, when we're doing this process, I would encourage you, and they're great concepts, but in energetic, we don't usually talk about like highest and best and be your best self because of the perfectionism in that it's like, my goal with people is you get, you enhance, you're unleashed more, you, you, you your life becomes more and more miraculous. So for the next few minutes, I'd like people, don't try to do it right. Don't try to reach any particular goal. Just trust if your own inner wisdom and spirit are in charge, you're moving on a wonderful spiritual path. And that, you know, you just keep getting better. So everybody take an easy, deep breath. And I, because once your miraculous self is, is really strong, I will run energy and then, um, uh, and again, I want to make clear that anybody can learn how to do that. It's not some mysterious gift that only a few of us can do. Um, that I'll be running energies. And even if you're listening to this in the recording, if you pretend it's happening right now, you will feel the energies. I mean, I've been doing this work for many, 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 many years. And I'm always getting emails from people like, oh, you said the recordings would work and I didn't believe it. And like, oh my God, um, you know, I really felt the energy and things change. So, um, just let the energy run. It doesn't matter if you feel it or not. If you feel it, that's fun. You don't need to feel it. You may temporarily feel discomfort, aches and pains. And that's sometimes when the energy hits blocks, it's uncomfortable. Um, so if that happens, that's fine. You know, it'll pass. If emotions come up, just be mindful of them. Because sometimes when you, as the energy is flowing, emo different emotions come up. You might get irritated. You might get frustrated, you might get anxious. Um, if that happens, just be mindful of it and go, oh, I'm, I'm releasing old energies. And they're probably not even your energies to begin with. So just be mindful and let yourself have whatever experience you have. So easy deep breaths. If you want to have a miraculous self right now, just, uh, just say yes, I want a miraculous self. I want a miraculous self. I want it to form right now. I want it to form right now. And then as a conscious being, you have a right to make choices in your life. So just go, I'm giving 100% permission for that to happen right now. I'm giving 100% permission for that to happen now. And notice the way I did it and Debbie did it. It's not like, I'm giving permission. It's just, I'm giving permission. Done. Okay, so let's get this going. Debbie, whether you want to call them angels, guides, whatever you call them, you have your your team is really like going, yeah, they're 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 helping you with this right now. The same for everybody listening, your own guides, angels, however you think of these things, they're really ready to help you. There's no effort involved, just intention and permission. And as your miraculous self is being formed, 
give 100% permission for to connect to your conscious mind, your unconscious mind, and your body. I give 100% permission to connect to my conscious mind, my unconscious mind, and my body. Fantastic. And as your miraculous self is forming and strengthening, give it 100% permission to work with the energies that are coming in now to clear whatever your miraculous self wants to clear, heal what it wants to heal, open up whatever abilities, resources in you. I mean, I believe that every single human being is an embodiment of a vast, powerful, beautiful spiritual being. And there's an opportunity to manifest more of who and what you really are in this lifetime. I give 100% permission for anything that is not of my highest good or serves me to be cleared, to be healed, for new energies to be brought in and new abilities to be initiated completely right now. And for everybody, be comfortable with, don't, I used to always try to max everything out. It's really a bad idea with energy work. Um, more and faster is not the same as better. So the wonderful thing, this is a podcast. It will be on Debbie's channel. So it'll be on our YouTube channels. Um, you don't have to do it all at once. So just let whatever is, I, I think it of like Goldilocks, whatever is just right for right now. Because I can tell you from, from really hard and bitter personal experience, and, and some years ago with my clients too, if you do too much too fast, it ends up being good, but you can throw yourself into what's called a healing crisis, which isn't fun. Um, and it isn't necessary. So just whatever's just right for right now. Part of believing and self-love and self-worth is we don't have to fix ourselves, you know, and reach this magical goal. We're just, we're moving into being more of who we are. So just let it, be small or large, whatever your miraculous self wants for right now, because you can always listen to this again and take it further. Hmm. Hmm. And normally I'd be a little quieter at this point, but Debbie explained to me like on radio, they don't like long silences, so forgive me if I keep talking, and, I, and I, will, I will say things that I think are helpful. And for those of you who don't want to listen, you can just tune me out, you know how to do that. It just takes some easy deep breaths and let the energy become stronger, more effective. More. And when I say stronger, it, it can be this really elegant strong, like the light touch. I think of somebody playing a harp. The energy can work with your energy like somebody playing a harp. They're just plucking it here and there and then beautiful things are happening. We don't need to be the drum section. <laughs> just light, easy. And again, the goal is that as you go through life, you're consciously, unconsciously, physically guided loved, supported, and nurtured by your miraculous self. Mm -hmm. And when that happens, you're also more guided, loved, nurtured, and supported by whatever you think is beyond that, whether you call it God or spirit or goddess or deities or Buddha or Allah or Vishnu or Shiva, um, Brahma, you know, whatever your beliefs are. So as your miraculous self gets stronger in your life, the greater spirit gets stronger in your life. And that makes your life more and more miraculous. Not that you never have challenges, but that you're guided and supported and helped no matter what's going on. And a lot of things just become incredibly easier too. <laughs>
Easy deep breaths. Remember, no effort, no pressure, just allowing. You miraculous yourself in the energy does all the work. And when you do a lot of different kinds of energy work and definitely energetic NLP, the processing goes on for days, even weeks. And while the other energies are continuing, we're going to start bringing in energies that will help you process and integrate this mm -hmm. so that the changes you're making will be as easy and flowing as possible. In fact, Sometimes they're so easy and flowing that people don't realize until later they go, wait a minute, in the past I would have acted differently, or oh, I haven't felt as anxious, or, or so often it's maybe not so a friend goes, oh, you seem a little happier than you did before, you're calmer, you know, you have more joy. And for everybody, put a lot of energy come into your heart. You really get a great healing in the heart energy center, heart chakra in the center of the chest. We hold a lot of pain there often. And a lot of it's other people's pain. So let's let that release. And to the extent that your miraculous self wants it, some of the shielding we have around our heart that we put on when we were younger that we don't actually need anymore, if your miraculous self goes, I don't need that shielding anymore, and it's actually in your way, let more of that clear. And then you can allow in more infinite universal love and more human love. And the infinite universal love has no judgments attached to it. It's not. It has no, well, you can get this love when you've done something and you change. It's just, it's just spirit loving us just as we are. Hmm. And a lot of you are probably familiar with the idea of grounding. I'd like you to try a, a, what will be a different way of grounding. Usually people ground themselves into the earth. Well, the earth is more powerful than we are, so I like to let the earth do the work. So give the earth permission to ground you right now. And one way to imagine that, and it's only gonna ground your authentic energy into your body, not the other energies in your energy field. It's only grounding your authentic energy into your body. And one kind of a fun way to imagine that is imagine every cell in your body has a point of light in your energy body. So every physical cell has a point of light that goes with it. And when the earth grounds you, every point of light pops in the cell it's supposed to be in because they get out of alignment. Just see them all like so that you're aligned. And let's let your miraculous self bring more of your authentic essence into your body and energy field. We're so clogged with other people's energies, we literally shove our own energy out. So right now, let your miraculous self bring more of this incredible being you are into your body. Along and into the energy field in and around your body, your chakras, your energy channels. And it will also bring in earth and universal energies that will support you in your next steps in life and in having a more miraculous life. Okay, easy deep breaths. We're winding down the energy and just bringing in that energy to help you process and integrate. And there's something we do in energetic NLP that um, I think you all like. So we've all had the experience that somebody changes their email address 
So we get an email going, this is my new address. You can't find me at the old one anymore. This is how to find me. Well, when your energy gets better, it can throw people, even your pets, you know, dogs and cats sometimes get a little weird because you're different and they don't understand it, even if it's different and better. So ask your miraculous self to send out spiritual emails to everybody in your life, you know, family, friends, people that your spirit has arranged for you to meet that you haven't met yet, um, that, you know, people you work with, clients, um, but include your pets and your plants. And this spiritual e email is just saying, oh, this is my new energy address. I'm not at the old one anymore. And you're not asking for approval or permission. You're, it's just like getting a, a, a change of address email. It's like, this is my new address. This is how to find me. And this is how to recognize me. And you'll probably like it better, but nonetheless, this is the new one. Okay, so let's come back to it. Let's bring in energies that are sparkling, that will make you alert again. It helps to stomp your feet and pat your body. Touch the tips of your fingers, wiggle your toes. Oh my gosh. You know, it feels like where you're sitting. Mm. Yes, go ahead. That was so beautiful. That was so amazing. I can't okay. believe how long we were out for. Um, wow, thank you. That was that was a beyond gift. I I had to oh, remind welcome. myself, honestly, I had to go remind myself to be present where I was because I could have gone far away. <laughs> At one point early on, yeah. my God, I had a pain back right here, if you can see, that I've never had before. Wow, did I have to breathe through that? I just had to make the grand yeah. assumption that something major was being removed. Then I had, uh, it felt like I'd been chewing gum, um, almost TMJ-like and that I just mm -hmm. breathed into while that was removed. Um, later on, I felt something, I didn't know what was going on. And then I went, oh, this is sacral. I feel like stuff is being whew, taken out of my sacral shock. Yeah. And then just when I thought that was done, like, okay, that was great. We're, we're done. Let's just breathe into this. This is beautiful. I'm freaking yeah. feeling amazing. Then right above both hey. my knees, almost, um, we have knock knees, but just above, ah, uh, uh -huh. there was something big going on there. And there was more almost extraction. And uh, it was pretty profound. Like, I just was like, do it. That's great. Whatever. And you get some pretty good cords going into that head and neck area that, that um, got, got removed. I mean, there was some, and a lot of programming attached to them. Oh. A lot of ancestral stuff. Interesting. Thank you. And some of it, um, you know, we have ancestral from our physical line, but we can have ancestor, ancestral from past lives. And um, it just, if anybody's listening who's not into past lives, you know, who knows what the truth is about it? All I know is that people have energy in their energy fields that are from other people, other lives, you know? So how that works, yeah, I'm very pragmatic. It's like how it works, what it all means. That's inter you know, those are fun questions. I just know it's there, you know? And, and when you clear it, your life gets better. Yeah, so. without a doubt, you're not carrying all that baggage around. So, um, Art, people can reach you at energeticnlp.com. Yes. Um, and so and, um, they can reach me at energeticnlp.com. And right now I, I, I have up, uh, I did a two hour, I call them energy spas, energy spa session all on the coronavirus and everything around it. And we work on karma and contracts and all kinds of things. Um, and it, it's free. And it's at miraculous self forward slash corona webinar if people want. But if if they just go to one of the other ones, if they get on my mailing list, I'll, I'll mail that all out to them. Yeah. And then I I have a program that's uh, a whole extended program on really building up your miraculous self. And because of the so many people are hurting economically right now, it's eighty five percent off. But if they're on my mailing list, they'll find out about any of that if they're interested. 
Okay. So I'm crazy about you now and your work. I'm like totally oh, digging you. it. So um, how else can they work with you? Because I mean, when I researched you, I mean, you're being very humble, mm -hmm. but you are mm -hmm. world renowned. <laughs> and, uh, you know, people do work with you all over the world. So can you just, just a few, like yeah. give me a bullet point or two before we end here. I'm sorry, a bullet point about? Oh, yeah. Like, uh, what are the ways they can work with you? Maybe become a facilitator, oh. maybe be a student of, and yeah. et cetera. Well, I'm going to be starting again. We have a program called the M Club that I'm really proud of. That it's, uh, it's both, all of my programs are personal and spiritual development programs, but, but it's also a training program because everybody can learn to work with energy. It's a, I mean, my ego would love it if it was a special gift only a few of us say out but everybody everybody's a miraculous being and um, and i love opening up that in people but i also for people that are experienced a lot of the people that work with me have been doing energy work from 10 to 30 years and they take what they already can do and one of my gifts is i, I help people take whatever they do to the next level mm. um and, uh, and that's one of my gifts is really opening up people's abilities so that's called the M Club. And then I have um, Discover Your Miraculous Self as an online program. I have other online programs going to be starting again. Um, they can find me on Facebook, your Energetic NLP. I do Facebook Lives. And um, I also do have a, something called the Transformation Accelerator Program, which is a one-to-one. -one. And almost all of my work is remote because my clients are all over the world. So, you know, like you, it's like, Everybody's going, oh, this Zoom thing. And I go, you know, oh, about it. <laughs> it's, no, no, in fact, I'd be giving my friends trouble. I go, are oh, you guys getting on Zoom now? You're messing it up for those of us who have seniority. But 99% um, uh, of my work is is remote uh, through Zoom or, or whatever. So um, I, I can work with people wherever they are. And if they get on my mailing list, I mean, we're going to be doing a, a lot of mailings lately, both of free and, and um, uh, and, and other kinds of programs. So people go to energeticnlp.com, sign up, they will hear all about it. And I do recommend again, and they'll hear about that coronavirus webinar. I've been getting um, really, really gratifying and wonderful feedback from people mm. on that. So, um, so kind of, you can, I know mm -hmm. I'm on your list and I, you've been giving a ton away and it's so kind of you to serve yeah. like this at a time when it's needed. This is Dare to Dream Art. What are you next year to dream? What are your future dreams or goals? Um, yeah, thank you. Um, I want to take, I want to get my work way more out in the world. In fact, I, I may talk to you about your program, the, um, um, the visibility program. Because um, I, I, I'm really proud of what I've done and the people I've helped, but I know I could be helping so many more people. So that's, that my dream now is to, um, uh, in fact, a, a number of psychics, have, have, they'll just tell me, they go, I see you in stadiums talking to stadiums full of people. And when they say that, it feels right. I mean, it wasn't a dream that I had, but now it's like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dare to dream that. I, I would love to be helping that many people at one time. So um, that's, that's my dare to dream. That's beautiful. I love that. Big exposure and mass influence. That is what it's all about because that is positive, my friend. All right. Yeah. I mean, that's what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. In my own humble way. Thank you so much for sharing your gifts, your brilliance on Dare to Dream today. It's really been a pleasure. Oh, well, I, I was, um, we met at this new media summit and, and Debbie was, and there were a number of podcasters there. Debbie was the person I most wanted to get interviewed by. So I was thrilled that you offered it. So um, thank you so much. Your miraculous self created it. But I have to admit, when you were on stage pitching and I, I heard you say NLP and I sort of checked you out a little bit, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> so we were meant to connect, my friend. And, and yay. Lord, yeah, yay for that. Miraculous selves connecting. I'm so grateful for today, and, and I'm still feeling the beautiful influence of what you just gave us, and I'm looking forward to the next days oh, and weeks and seeing how this all, like, just the river transpires, and what a contribution. I'm going to end today's show with this quote from Eckhart Tolle, 
which is life will give you whatever experience is most helpful for the evolution of your consciousness. Mm -hmm. If you're ready to write a chapter in a book about dogs, I have the anthology, which is called The Ultimate, M-U-T-T, -T, <laughs> The Ultimate <laughs> Book for Dog Lovers. Woof! And I'm taking you through the entire process. Just check out debbied.net slash anthology and register because you definitely want to get one of those chapters if your heart is called to it. If you're an author and you would like to be coached on the platform for, you know, very affordable platform I've just created, which is debbie-shinger.com slash visible visionaries. And I will help you write your book. Super excited about that. And next week on this number one transformation conversation, uh, Gosh, I have so many guests coming up. I'm trying to follow. But um, Dr. Sue yeah. Porter, you absolutely want to listen to that conversation. I am telling you, we were talking about way beyond this planet and into the cosmos. I woke up this morning thinking about it. This is why I love this show. What art's going to do is going to influence <laughs> me down the road. What Dr. Sue does influences me down the road. I am so deeply grateful to do what I do, and I couldn't do it without you. And remember to dare. That really is the operative word. If you will dare to dream and dare to make your dreams come true, my goodness, what's possible. And now you have a miraculous self to boot. Thanks for joining us today.